Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another episode of Testing in Nutshell. This is Neesh Kumar Singh and we are talking about UFT tutorials. As a part of our, this tutorial, we'll be getting to understand that what happens when the automation scripts need to be prepared before the application comes to you. Of course, when you talk about some initial testing like unit testing or integration testing, it may require you to prepare your test cases or test script much earlier in the lifecycle. And that definitely does not depend on the availability of the application or the test objects which you are going to test. But is that possible to create a test script without having the objects in place? So how exactly will you do that with help of UFT by creating your script without having an interface of the application, but being aware of what your application is expected to have? And that's where we'll be creating and utilizing that approach of UFT to prepare our test script and apply that properties which we will be utilizing later to update our script and run that. So let's get started quickly and understand this approach of automation as well. As a part of this tutorial, we will be understanding and working with test objects in UFT. Here we will be understanding what are test objects, scripting using test objects, updating the test object properties, and highlighting the test objects on the application. In order to get started, first of all, we are talking about a scenario where the application is unavailable or probably unstable and you want to get prepared with your scripts before the application comes for the execution. Now, of course, that becomes a quick challenge for any individual to prepare a script without having an understanding of the object properties. We do understand that automation mainly works with the unique property sets which cannot be executed without it. So when it comes to creation of the script, the script creation does not really require you to have the object properties. And just to clarify that, we are having this quick tutorial to talk about the same, that how a script can be prepared without having the objects in place. So for our kind information, we would first like to quickly see what I'll be talking about and what is that we will be doing ahead in order to automate our activity. Again, taking a simple process, where we'll be interacting with this particular object that is the parent object my flight app sample application and trying to automate the simple action that is entering the username entering the password and clicking on ok button and after that clicking on the close so in order to do this activity i really want to just understand that what sort of application or objects will be there in my screen and then get started with my own creations and work with it so all you need is the architecture of the objects which will be coming on the application and you can certainly click your own, create your own script without even having the application and the objects in the repository. Now, but you do remember that if I start typing some of the thing here, something like this, it does not recommend me as it does not understand what I'm talking about and does not pick up any such objects which we might be interested in to work. So having them in the repository can definitely help you a lot to create your objects and script simultaneously. But right now, as we do not have the application with us, then we just have to create something of our own. And if you remember, when you go to the object repository, you do see the test objects as the item here under the repository. So instead of using this button, we do have another button which says create object, which is to define a new test object on our own. And there's a quick shortcut here called as define new test objects. So using this button, you can definitely create any sort of object which you want to in order to write your script without the properties. Okay, the properties is something which will come from the application when you have it and then you will run the script. So right now, just to create our script, we don't really need the properties. We just need the objects and their standard names. So assume that I'm creating a particular set of objects, which I'm not sure that whether the application will have the same name or not. But just to clarify you that final execution happens on the properties, so you don't really have to worry about the object names. So we just have to be careful that what sort of object your application makes use of and then try creating those objects. So if you see here, I've got a list of a lot of objects which my UFT can actually work with and that completely depends on the environment which is the add-in selected. 
So right now if I drop down here and see that there are a lot of add-ins. So if I say I go with the WPF which is Windows Presentation Foundation and I would see the objects being filtered as per that. So the very first object which I'll be creating is a parent object which is WPF window and I just have to search for it and say yes this is the one. I click on this and just name it as say for example my window. Okay, again, I'm purposefully making different names just to give you a clarity that I'm not trying to fake around that these objects will work and it should not be mandatorily the same as the application name. So if you see my application name is HPE My Flight Sample Application, but I'm trying to name it differently just to justify that you really don't have to be so accurate what the name of the application will be. And then you just click on Add. Now if you see that the parent object my window has been created, now it's time to create a child object. But if you continue creating on the same window, it will come in line but will not be declared as a child object. So I will close this and by selecting this particular parent object once again, I click on a new uh, test object button. And this time again I do the same thing that is like going to WPF and this time it is a WPF edit and I say it's uh, user again keeping it partially so that we understand that it's not really necessary to have the same names exactly as per the application to run it click on add now if I want I can continue as it is in the same child tree and I have another one as say for example PWD which is for the password and then I need another object which is WPF button which says uh, uh, login or OK however it is and then I again close it and we are done. So all we need is these simple objects to be created. If you want to create another parent object, just click on test object and again go for this and it will create a new parent object. Okay, if you want to go with child, select the parent and then click on the new test object. Let's write scripts and see that does it really help us to prepare the script. But if you remember from my previous tutorial, even if I just drag and drop, I get my script written there right or if I want I can even start typing in and it will detect whatever I have written so I open this it detects it dot WPF edit for example we have two objects right now so I have to get started with user sorry so I just say user and then I say dot set of course the test data is with you when you write test cases you do know the test data with you so you have username as John and again the next one will be the similar thing which is this and you say dot WPF uh, edit once again and here this time it will be password and dot set quickly completing the steps so that we can go with the execution and WPF window once again this time it is WPF button and uh, there it is click dot so dot click is the operation which you perform and at the end I wanna uh, close this window it's, this is completely optional if you wanna have that window on the screen you can do that or you can just remove it by clicking on the close to close the application so right now if you see it did not prompt me anything else uh, to prepare my script with just having these objects in the screen but if you observe here on the right side the values are completely empty for any object because I just created the object name and their class the object name and the class not the properties so if I run this particular script it will certainly fail because the reason is this object does not have any specific properties to identify it on the application now assume that you got your application here so your script is completely ready and with the moment when the application comes you do realize that okay your window names are different and uh, the one which they have specified here is again different like username and password and okay button instead of login button so if you want you can always rename them as per the expectation for example like this press ok and hit enter and you see that your script gets updated so you don't have to do a tedious job updating your script manually you just do it in the repository and the object gets updated automatically just for a consideration if you want you can do it for another one for example for the password I just come here and replace it as whatever it is and press enter you would see the script got updated with the new object name but again keeping the other ones the same 
I'm not going to update it just to show you that there's no difference if the object names are different. The only important thing is the properties. So how to run this? Now once you have your application with you, you need to click on this button which is called as update from application. And here you just click on this and select the desired object which you're updating. So make sure that a lot of people go wrong with selecting the right object before clicking on this button. For example, right now, I wanted to update the parent object, but I selected password and that's where you go wrong. So click on my window and update from application and select the parent object. Now this will prompt you, is this what you wanted to map it to? I said yes. So really don't have to update your script as far as the properties are being captured here. And finally, the properties will be the one which will be referred. Let's do it for other button as well for OK. Though I have changed the name, but it does not go with the desired properties. So the properties need to be captured. Again, for the password, click on the password field. It maps it. Press OK. And if you see, the password name is small p, but I have a capital P. So there's a difference still there, but does not make any sense. And click on username, which is in fact the name of the box's agent name, not the username. And you got it there. Just to confirm before you run, there's also a button called as highlight in application, which is here, this one. Okay, highlight in application to confirm that the object is able to be identified based on the properties which you have. So select user and click on this button. Well, there is a highlight on the username. Click on password, highlight it. Yes, there's a highlight on the password. Press OK, highlight it. Yes, the OK button is highlighted. And check the parent. OK, so then everything works fine. No matter, my names are still different than what you expected. So final call, just running the script to see that everything works fine or not. Click on Run. So that's where my application is. It goes to the user, username, password, and yep. It's just that to close, uh, probably the name of the application is different. I didn't realize that. So I must have added this also. So let's do that quickly and see that if it works because we must be having a surety that whatever we have done is correct. So I'll just go to object repository once again and I'll create another parent object. And this time I should be selecting test object. Click on define new test object, filter, WPF. And this time it is a WPF window. And I want to give a name as the, say for example, new window. Okay, and then I click on add. So there's a parent window added here. And now I want to update it from the application this page, which is slightly different. If you see, there's a name difference, which is having a different properties. And I want to give it a name differently. So let's highlight this and confirm. Yes, it works fine. And then I change my script to different one, which is new window. And I hope just want to make sure that it's the same name which I'm using. So yes, it is new window. And I close this with the double quotes. Now let's try running this once again to have a successful playback. So it all happens if the properties are different. It may definitely require you to have that new property being added. And this time it works fine. So it's just that maybe the both the dialog boxes, the windows were not the same and they had different properties. So you just want to make sure that the properties work fine. So this is where you can make use of defining new test objects, updating it later when you get the application with the properties and highlighting quickly to see that if your object is being able to identify it. But you really don't have to work on your script to update it. But later, if you want, you can definitely update it for the user convenience that somebody else using on this, uh, working on this application must have the right names of the object, which can be done easily from the object repository without much of the maintenance. So that's how we wanted to use that and understand this concept in automation with help of UFT. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.